Hello and welcome to the third episode of The Better Meta, and this time we're going to be discussing deck building with some incredible players, so without further ado, let's introduce the roster. Ben. Uh, I'm Ben. I, uh, I've been on the channel a couple of times and I'm here. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Um, Hi, uh, I'm Matt. I heard you just uh, topped like, yeah. one another regional. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Priyan. Uh, I'm Priyan, and I'm, I'm the guy who just can't stop playing Burning Abyss for some reason. Uh, I, I have issues. Yeah, a lot of issues. <laughs> Tim. Uh, I'm Tim Cox. I don't know. That's <laughs> simple. <laughs> Enough said. I, I occasionally play Yu-Gi-Oh! Tom. <laughs> yeah. I'm Tom. Okay. <laughs> you do! Uh, I'm Joe, and I run the channel. Everyone who is in this chat has been invited in because you've all got a lot of experience with playing the game, with building decks and taking them to competitive events and then doing extremely well with them, let's be honest. Um, so the aim of today's discussion is to try and sort of filter down to what it means to build a deck from a competitive standpoint. Uh, so my first question is, why would you build a new deck? It's It's got to be like fun and interactive that that's that's my that's my personal opinion so like um it's got to have like cards that you know work together and do uh and sort of do things like do like sort of very fun combos with perhaps existing cards and yeah sure. it's it's gotta it's gotta have that element of fun to it because that's what that's what we, that's what you know we should be playing this game for it should be playing for fun in it yeah I don't know if anyone wants to add to that. <laughs> I, I think the reason to build a deck from a new set or a new deck is if it is just substantially better than the previous decks that were in the format. Yeah. yeah. So like, if, for example, there is a better combo deck, the better combo deck is generally always just better than every other deck in the format. Because it can do more. Yeah, it's normally true. It's also coming back to Priyan's point, it's probably more fun because you're doing quite a lot with your turns. I mean, if you have something new, then other people don't know what it is. Yeah, that's it's pretty big advantage, yeah. Other people, like, don't know and aren't prepared for it. That's obviously, like... Because, I mean, you saw that Prank Kids won a YCS, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, and they're clearly not a good enough deck no. to win a YCS, but no one knew what they did <laughs> and no one was in any way prepared for it. Yeah, so. it was just yeah. There's been a, a lot of deck. examples of that, though. Like, YCS New Jersey, uh, we all played the... Or, like, basically all the Europeans that top played the Trickstar deck. Yeah. The Trickstar Sky Striker deck. It was the first YCS of, you know, that format. Sky Striker yeah. was predicted to be... You know, pure Sky Striker was predicted to be the best deck. Trickstar Sky Striker had a very good matchup for that event. But after that event, the Trickstar deck just got substantially worse and Goki became the absolute pick. Yeah, it's uh, similar to YCS Bokken when uh, World Chalice won it. Uh, mm. It'd been out for a while, everyone knew what it did, but no one expected it, no one prepared for it, and then it just took the event by song. So, fun, competitive ability, and the fact that nobody really knows, they're sort of our three key takeaways from this, then? Oh, yeah. Well, being know knowing it and, and being prepared are different things as well. Yeah, you true. might be aware of it, but even if you know it, you might not think there's enough of it to have a side deck for it. So either people mm. are not going to be prepared or they're not going to know. Yeah. It also um, depends like how in the know you are about events. So like say you know for example what a certain team like is playing. You can predict for that because it's like at the end of the day you're playing against the players not necessarily against the decks. So it gets to a certain stage in the tournament where your success is based upon who you're playing against. If you can expect a lot of people from one team to be a large portion of uh, the top card or exos and you intend yeah. to be in the same position. Then you And say, for example, you like you have some inside information, and you know they're all playing one deck. It means you can prepare your matchup for those players to have a better chance of winning the tournament. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. There are, people often talk about um, like building a deck to top versus building a deck to win. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, I'll just use the example of like Prank Kids. 
Um, so that had a like a it had a very easy time against Sky Striker and Thunder for the yep. event, which were the most popular decks. And obviously by the end of the tournament, he was playing all Sky Striker and Thunder and beat them all. But he played, yeah, I you know he during against the combo deck. They just had absolutely no chance. So yeah, um, yeah. If you think your to play in the deck top has cut. a significant edge over the format or what the majority will play, like you could play the like for example YCS Chicago, uh, Raf won with the Lunar Light deck that we came up with, and yeah, it was great. You know, it was a good deck. You know, it's inherently like you know its cards are good or whatever, right? Like we discovered very quickly that there were certain matchups that were just unwinnable, like Crusadia. We just lost to Crusadia yeah. <laughs> because of the kaijus and they'd make you start and it was just impossible. So like, I think at some point that weekend we all lost to a Crusadia variant of some description. Like if you build your deck to get to top cut, that's generally not good enough, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I feel you yeah. should always be building your deck to win an event. I agree. Like, yeah, entirely. Absolutely. You, you go for the top or not at all. The next question is, uh, when you get an idea for a new deck, or a new build of a deck, what are your first steps in building it? Generally, what I do is I message like a group chat, like the ARG chat or whatever, and be like, is, does this work how I think it works? And I'll explain what I like, you know, I'll say like, does this card do X with this? If so, is this viable? Mm -hmm. Or am I just like, in a, like, you know, obviously if you're in your room or you know, at work or whatever, and you're just reading cards and you're like, Oh, this seems really good with this. You can like you set it up to be in a vacuum. Yeah. You're not getting feedback. It becomes an echo chamber. Mm. So like that's where having a lot like a circle of people to talk to about combos, decks, etc., becomes really important. I think that's why I'd recommend one of the most things for is deck building. Like for deck building is that. Because yeah. I can like say to somebody, you know, I can message like Darren or whatever and be like, does this card do this with X? If so, is that good? And he can be like, well, that's terrible. Why would you want to do that when you do this? <laughs> or he'd be like, oh, wow, that is good. Not necessarily, like, it's, it's, ideally, yes, you, you should be talk you probably want to talk to, like, really, really experienced players. But even if it's, like, just people in, yeah, your, local good, yeah. in your local circle who have just, like, who maybe have experience in the strategy, hmm. um, or even like, even just like a Facebook group, honestly, like if, if yeah. the, uh, for instance, I'm part of this, uh, like burning a bit, burning a bit, like <laughs> theory group. Yeah. Uh, and like one, one idea that really sort of took off was when one, one guy, one guy mentioned uh, Goki Pole. And I think I, I, I think I've talked about this before, like Goki Pole and burning a bit. Uh, that was actually really good and really enjoyable to play as well. So I took that to a regional. I did like I did okay with it. I had fun. Yeah. So like things like that. Uh, if you can find like places that can really sort of get ideas going, uh, that would be that. That's also really good. Yeah. The the difficulty then is filtering the the noise, right? Because you do get a lot of uh, strange suggestions. Let's say. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> so that's, that's where it's good to have a consistent group of, say, friends or whatever, even just people from your local, so you can bounce ideas back off each other. And then you've got a much greater amount of people to test these ideas as well. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. even if an idea looks bad on paper, it might turn out to be good. Probably will, but there is that small possibility. So like like um, like um you said, just testing on dual book or whatever, that's a, a good idea just to, just to test the waters a bit. Sure, yeah. So once you have this sort of concept of a, a new idea or a build that you're going to put together, um, how easy is it to determine which cards are entirely necessary? Because you might start building it from a concept and then realize that actually the cards you put together in, in the initial instance, they're not the, the best fit versus the meta or versus the, the contradictions that your, your circle po pops up. Yu-Gi-Oh! now is, is so fast, I'm just like ridiculously ruthless with cards. Um, as to what's a necessary card. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if everyone else has this opinion, but it's basically like, if it's not a starter card or it's not essential to the combo, or it's not in your extra deck, then it's gone, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You start with that and then you, you decide what else you want to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if there's, if there's nothing else that is a starter card or doesn't add to your combo, then then you then you have space for other stuff but that, that's how i sort of 
start every deck. Yeah, yeah effectively, like you look at the deck, like for like example, Salomon Great, you always want to have Gazelle in your. So like you play as many copies of Gazelle as possible, like pseudo copies. Like then, what's the next thing you want to play? Spinny, right? So you play like how many spinnies do you want? Do you ever want a multi drawer, which is obviously like a math thing? Then it becomes like you weigh up consistency and power versus like you know garnets bricks whatever right the website i recommend for like deck building um maybe some of you guys have usually probably heard of it is stat trek i, I think there's like a more modern thing called y geo party but it's basically just high ge hypo geometric distribution yeah yeah i, I normally use yugioh.party but yeah um anything like that is really really key for just checking before you actually go into games the the ability of your deck because you won't be able to get the same understanding from playing like 50 games or something yeah so i think that there's a reasonable difference between like deck building in a combo deck and no i mean i was basically talking about a combo deck because almost yeah. all you get decks are combo decks but there are now you know control decks too yeah um and that you probably require a bit more experience and testing in order to figure out you know what's good against other decks because if you're playing a defensive card it's only for use against other decks rather than yourself yeah and then it's um, sort of about coverage as well as uh power yeah so then it's a sort of practice thing um so i guess when you play you know a deck like sky striker or salamangre your engine is sort of more minimal yeah um but you know there's a sort of marked difference to me between a a combo deck and a non-combo deck, I guess, where you would play other defensive cards. Yeah. So what, one thing I actually, I want to go back to one of your earlier points, Tom, is um, when you were talking about combo decks, you said that you want to focus on having the starter cards and the combo cards, but let's um, let's consider Orcust at the moment. You know, there are so many cards that could be starter cards. You don't want to be running all of them. Um, so at what That's point true. do you limit yourself? Um, you have 40 cards. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but then you wouldn't play yeah, the... True. So you wouldn't play the Call by the Graves? Because they're not starter cards or, or um, garnets. That's a fair point. Yeah. I mean, there's sort of ex extenders as well, which people call them, right? Yeah. Um, which are cards that allow you to push through what your opponent's doing. Um, especially in Orcus, where, like, everything is a starter and extenders are starter and starters are basically the same because you just need to get two months on the field right yeah yeah well exactly that's where uh, i guess that's where call by the grave fits in a, a weird spot because it doesn't actually enable your combo it just protects it yeah yeah it's an interesting one D it depends on the deck because the the deck is so consistent then i suppose a, a sort of powerful card like call by the grave or something like you know cards like soul charge which don't increase the consistency of your deck because they won't help you combo off alone mm. um but if the deck's consistent enough then you can start to fit in powerful cards like pulled by the grave which is a fair point yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. in in particular with august if you're the the uh the point you made about extenders you probably need more of those in a sense because obviously if your your normal summon gets stopped you don't want to have it many too many normal summons in your deck because otherwise you'll just brick normal summons and if your normal summon gets stopped, like say your connector gets like uh, striked or whatever, then your your turn's over. Yeah. Uh, you want to have like different. You want to have like all these uh, all these different options. Like for instance, the dangerous. The dangerous are like a really great example of just free summons. Um, you essentially want like free summon the deck so you can make your mermaid or. Well, I imagine every deck wants to be a uh, free summon the deck. Yeah, <laughs> at the moment. Ex exactly. Uh, it, it um, I mean, this is the case with combo anyway, because yeah. you you want to get as me uh, whatever monsters you can, so you can make your combo, make your link, link laddering as well. Yeah. Because like obviously link laddering is extremely important in, in this uh, this meta. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get what you're saying. The yeah. fact that you can you get access to so many more extra deck options and potential combo plays just from having additional extenders within the deck. Yeah. All right. So beyond the the necessary cards, then, um, 
we've sort of brought it up already. How do you determine uh, which tech choices would be optimal to go with a deck after you've got your base set? Um, that, that all depends on the tournament. You have to build each deck for each specific tournament. You can't sort of have a deck and just play it over and over again. I mean, you, you can, but if you want the greatest success, you have to try and build a deck for each specific tournament as the meta progresses every week. Yeah. So you have to um, just figure out what you need in, like um, if you feel it's Strike, 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 uh, Sky Strike is really popular, you need certain cards against that anti-spell or whatever. Um, if Salamangrates, you know, everyone's playing that at the moment, you need suitable cards against that, Phantasmay, things like that, you need. You can't just keep the same deck, I don't feel. You have to let it evolve. I think it depends on the type of tournament as well. Oh yeah, of course. So like, you know, if you go to locals, it's probably not a good idea to main deck cherries. <laughs> yeah. well, like, depends your extra deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have to have an extra card for everything, for every person that's there, sort of thing, right? But you go to a regional, and then yeah, maybe cherries is more viable. Depends if but, you just want to savage the one, you know. Yeah, the, like it's kind of the local one person with your cherries. Like I cited Lancia for the last few regionals I've entered because I expected Tom Rose to be there with his Orcus deck, and I'm <laughs> like, I just. I feel like I can beat like ninety percent of the room that isn't Tom. Like so, but what about know, Tom? Fifty percent. Oh yeah, you know if I draw Lancia, good. <laughs> but, you know that's the thing is like deck building. You can deck build for certain players as well. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend that strategy to like most people because every matchup may be harder for you, sort of thing. Like I feel like I can breeze a lot of games, hmm. but. That may not be the case if you're just starting out or if you're yeah. not confident and stuff. Yeah. Also, if Tom isn't coming to your events, you know, maybe signing yeah, free answer yeah. for him isn't <laughs> the best plan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't he at all the events? For, well, yeah, pretty much. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> just thought they didn't start until they got there. <laughs> We've discussed the text and the necessary cards. Um, on the choice of deck, obviously, if you're discussing with your circle about new decks and old decks, a lot of people will have preferences based on what they've mastered before, what they've uh, experienced doing especially well, or what they've seen in the meta, but how do you remove your own bias in your choice of deck in order to pick something that you, you believe is just at the absolute best in any particular event? Anything you do, like, you should probably take a deck you feel comfortable with. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's nice to come up with what the best deck is, um, but deck. I mean, you want to be playing it well as well. So if there's another deck you think looks a lot more fun, or whatever, like if you're like, oh, I wish I was playing that all the time, then <laughs> yeah, you're probably not going to play as well. So like, yeah. if you turn up to an event, uh, you know, say you get there on the Friday and your friends are. This deck's the best deck in the room, and you're like, oh, okay. And then, but you've never played a game with it before in your life. That's a very bad idea. Unless so, it just so plays much, itself, yeah. and it is insane. Um, so like, to be fair. Yeah, like, fine, man, you can probably turn up and play that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why, as a, a rule, I tend to always try and pre-rage on the Friday to not get um, hmm, convinced yeah. overnight mm -hmm. <laughs> to change decks and then play something I've not tested or I'm not 100% comfortable with. Yeah. That is a very good plan. Yeah, the, I agree with that. I feel like most decisions you make at like two o'clock in the morning are bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the just, time, yeah, just just wake up in the middle of the night and realize, oh, I should have I should have played Salamangrate. What we're doing? Uh, I think I could like, for instance, learn the Salamangrate combos. They're not hard to learn, but would I enjoy playing the deck? No, the deck's really boring to me. So like, I feel I wouldn't. I feel I wouldn't personally do well with the deck. So it's not really worth my time. Trying to remove your personal bias is just if you're not going to have a if you're going to be unhappy about it, is the best when you feel the most comfortable playing with it and your friend says something else, then you should probably play the deck that you think is the best. Yeah, yeah. Does that ever so like Siri? If if, if if it's at the beginning of a you know a month and you say to your friend like I think this is good and they say. No, I think this other deck's better, and you you say, "All right, I'll practice with that." Then, sure, by all means. But if it's like you know the day before a tournament or whatever, yeah, <laughs> then you. It's a bit late. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
So you can you can attempt to remove some of that early on, just give yourself the time to get good with the deck. What is the deck that you guys have had the most fun building? And we'll do this in the same order that we did the intro, so we'll start off with Ben. Uh, the most fun building? Um, so there's two decks, one which was just a really funny idea that I came up with, and it's put quite a while ago. Uh, so we'll start with that one, I called it Google, because um, it searched a lot, so it played uh, Ghost Tricks, Watts, and The Hands when they just came out. Right. Literally every time you played a card you were searching another card or some new deck. Uh, it wasn't particularly that great, but it was just really fun. Yeah. Uh, and then another deck which uh, I had some uh, success with um, was Chain Beat. So um, I know there's an old deck, but you, know, you, you just it's sort of like a control deck, but you you whittle them down with uh, like Black Guard and make all their monsters small, and then you use uh, Wind Up Rabbit and Evil Swamp Thunderbird to dodge your um, Black Garden, and then your guys are stronger than theirs. And it was just really fun controlling the game. <laughs> yeah, nice. Sounds cool, uh, Matt. I don't know, uh, probably uh, from like plus one to five is for that. There was this like Trap Chicks Ninja deck that worked like that. <laughs> what? Like, um, what was it? Hanzo grabbed one of the ninjutsu things and then you tribute the Hanzo during your opponent's turn and grab a Mamilio from deck and you pop a card. Seems fun. Get some free pops in. I remember people were taking one copy of Mamilia in like Fyfus to grab the trap hole. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Prian, what's your most fun uh, deck? It's, it's pretty much which type of Burning Abyss deck was my favourite. Uh, <laughs> well. At this point. So, I think that's probably um, when I played Speedroid Burning Abyss. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking just Terratops. It was like... Uh, like Terratops, Takatop, Borg, uh, Triodice, and Speed Recoveries. Um, <laughs> okay. th and that was actually Yo, one, one of my first. Speed Recovery is broken, side note. Just, just yeah. point out there. <laughs> that was actually what I won my first regional with, I believe. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, so wow. essentially, I think this was this was Monarch format, where like uh, most, uh, literally everyone else was playing like Monarchs or PK Fire, and I was just playing this. Uh, and my logic behind playing trio dice was that those people sided flying C. So uh, if they flying seed me, I'd either make Virgil or I also play Trish in my extra deck. So <laughs> so like when they flying seed me to uh, flying seed me on turn one, I'd just make Trish and they'd have they'd have they'd start with four cards in hand. And that was actually mm. really funny. <laughs> that seems yeah. pretty I funny. Think, I think you might have Trish lived one of my mates in top cut of nuts, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of my mates got Trishler by uh, Dragon Dice. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, that was really fun. Is, is there a, <laughs> these are broken combos, and we need to note these down. And uh... yeah, all right, uh, we'll move on to Tim. Got a favorite deck that you built? Uh, what was the question again? Was it just a deck you enjoyed making? Yeah, or... just a, a deck that you've had the most fun to build. Fun to build? Uh, uh, okay, so there's a few. Like spiral would be the main one. Yeah. Oh boy. Spiral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spiral. What? Spiral had so many variations. Like obviously the full power one was just absurd, but, but then you got the dark you know, one. We've had the nightmare one. Yeah, yeah. Like that deck's been interesting to build and like turn up with it to events and stuff. You know, before everybody else, because it's kind of been like an inner circle kind of thing, and just be like, oh, look at this big crazy combo that no one expected. But it sucks because it's MST Resort and you lose. <laughs> but you know, like, I guess also like, you know, having so like helping to build the Lunar Light deck. That was a really interesting process. Yeah. Of just Vlad coming up with this, being like, these cards are insane. We we're all like, um, these cards look terrible. They're all insane, but uh, they're called Lunar Light, so... Uh... Yeah, yeah, exactly, and then just being like, oh, okay, this is actually really good. Uh, I've had a lot of fun, like, testing Salomon Great, building Salomon Great. Uh, the Trickstar deck was a lot... The Trickstar Sky Striker deck was a lot yeah. of fun, like, having a lot of uh, starting points on that, you know, like, a lot of... You know, just generally, like, I guess kind of crafting what ended up being one of the more play decks of that format yeah, uh, like obviously true. i didn't i didn't come up with it like i'm sure somebody else did but like helping to kind of refine it i guess yeah but 
Yeah, I, I like to, I, if I play a format, I like to play one deck for the whole thing because I like to pick a deck and stick with it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But there's not too many formats I enjoy, so. <laughs> <laughs> Last one then, Tom? Um, uh, can I say two? Yeah. One I deck like four. A, a very long time ago, like before Sekka's Light, where you played Monster Mash. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it was so much fun. Um, so you had like Gallus still. Yeah. And um, Witch of the Black Rose. Oh, this is going those. way back. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but then one of the most, like, it was sort of good and fun decks that I made was the, the Shadow deck in, like, so it was when Shadows had just come out and people were like trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, and like everyone was, the, the, the first sort of variant that was popular was the Artifact Engine, but I was running Thunder Dragon. Okay. Because um, then you could Soul Charge. And that was just great. Um... Like Thunder Dragon and Soul Charge. and Yeah. Uh, it was lots of fun. <laughs> We've got some cool. very exciting news for everyone that probably no one will think is in any way interesting. Magic the Gathering is like a computationally complete problem. There are certain class of <laughs> algorithms. Okay. 